Hi guys and welcome to today's lesson. Uh, we're going to look at the sea and we're going to look at the coastal processes that is involved at the sea. We're going to look at some of the landforms and features and what actually makes these landforms and features. Um, before I do that, please remember to check out our website where all the, you can find all the videos and many more. We're currently doing maths ones now, so if you check on uh, the website you can see some maths videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. So we're going to look at uh, the sea and, and our coasts. Our coasts are constantly being under attack uh, because of the action of the sea and the waves are responsible for erosion, transportation and deposition of this material along our coasts. In today's lesson we're going to focus on erosion. And there are five ways in which co our coasts are eroded through five different processes and they are hydraulic action, Abrasion, attrition, air compression, and the last one is solution. Now, what I hope you notice is these are exactly the same as the coast, as the river erosion processes when we looked at rivers, except the only difference is we've got an extra one here and this is air compression. So just like with river erosion and the, f the four processes, I'm going to explain these five processes and they're exactly the same as river erosion processes but we'll go through them again. So hydraulic action, this is the force of the water crashing against the coastline. So the waves is the force of the water of water, i.e the force of the waves crashing against the coastline. The second one, abrasion. This happens when the rocks or the pebbles are hurled against the coastline. This breaks the rock off the coastline causing erosion. So it's when the, uh, the rocks are hurled or thrown at the coastline And as they crash against the coastline, the rocks break off from the coastline, causing erosion. Attrition. This is when the stones or the rocks that are being carried in the sea are in collision with each other. And as they crash against each other, they actually break each other up. That's when the rocks crash and break each other up. The next one, air compression, and we haven't done this one before. So air compression, really simple, it's when air gets trapped in the cracks in the rocks. The air is compressed, which increases the pressure. As the wave then moves out, the air is trapped and expands. This creates an explosive effect in the confined crack. This weakness of the rock then eventually breaks off. So it's when air gets trapped. Air it's trapped and when the, mo when the wave moves out the air expands which creates an explosion and the cr it cracks the rock and eventually the rock will break off and, and the last one is solution and solution is, the, is when acids in the water dissolve the rock so this is possible when the sea water is along the coastline of chalk or limestone and it actually the acids dissolve the rock. Acids dissolve the rock. Now, you need to know these five processes that we just, that we just looked at. And then you're going to be asked in the exam, can you give, explain a feature or landform that was formed because of coastal erosion? And when you get that, you have to pick a feature or a landform of coastal erosion, explain it, and you must, must, must use these uh, coastal erosion processes above. Some students, they explain how maybe a cliff is formed or a bay or a headland, but they don't actually uh, use the erosion processes. You must use the erosion processes in your answer when you're explaining how a uh, coastal feature or landform was formed. Okay, so what are the features or landforms you can talk about in your answer when you're asked about coastal erosion. 
Well, you can talk about the first one, bays and headlands. The second one you could talk about is cliffs. The third one you can talk about caves and blowholes. The fourth one you can talk about is arches. Uh, sea stacks and sea stumps. Now I always get asked the question of which is the best feature or landform to learn for coastal erosion. Well I think for rivers the best one is a waterfall and I said the best one, for, the reason why that was the best one for a waterfall is because then when you come onto the coastal processes a waterfall is very similar to cliffs. So if you learn a waterfall for the rivers I would definitely learn cliffs for coasts because it's very similar to a waterfall and it makes it much much easier to, to learn in the exam. It doesn't matter which one you learn though, you can learn bays and headlands or caves and blowholes or arches, stacks and stumps but you must know one in good detail and you when you learn it you must use, let me just get this, you must have these coastal erosion processes in your answer when you're explaining how these landforms are formed. So, in my opinion, I think the best feature of a coastal erosion uh, to learn is a cliff, okay? And it's because it's very similar to river erosion when you look at a waterfall, okay? So we're going to look at cliff erosion and how a cliff erosion actually forms. So, first of all, a cliff is a steep sided slope uh, which is found along the coast and is, is formed because of hydraulic action, air compression and abrasion. The first thing, hydraulic action, you've got the waves and they crash against the cliff. As it crashes against the cliff it finds a line of weakness along the coast and this line of weakness is eroded away and this forms a notch. This happens through the process of hydraulic action as the sheer force of the waves crashing against the cave forms this notch here. With continual erosion and undercutting, the notch gets bigger and bigger and the rocks above the notch uh, are left unsupported. So all this area here is going to be left unsupported. So i just highlight this area here. This area here is all going to get left unsupported the more that this is eroded in. Okay, so the further that this notch gets eroded in, the more this is going to be unsupported. And then what's going to happen is, as the waves hit the face of the of the cliff, uh, air is going to get uh, get trapped in the little cracks in the fissures. When the when they then wave retreats back in uh, into the sea, the air that is trapped escapes, and there's little small little explosions that happen. This leads to the shattering of, ro of rock, which falls into the sea as the compression occurs. This is called air compression. The sea uses these shard rock pieces to further erode uh, the bottom through abrasion and you'll also get some attrition as the water uh, rocks crash against each other and actually break each other up. As the cliff erodes further inland, a wave cut platform, okay this wave cut plof platform, uh, the valves which may be seen at low tide, the eroded material will be carried out to the sea forming a wave built terrace. Now with this um, cliffs you need to know an example, an example that I would give in Ireland is the cliffs of motor in County Clare. And an example of this wave cut platform that can be seen at low tide would be in Loch Shiny in County Dublin. Okay, so I've just wrote out um, basically what I explained in the pr previous video. Um, please, you can take use these notes, but I've also, if you want to maybe take your own notes while I explained um, this how this feature of uh, coastal erosion is actually formed, that would be use useful because I could only write little small little notes here. So please go back, listen to the video again, and 
make your answer, okay? Especially if, you, if, they, if Cliffs is the one that you're going to know in detail. So that's it for, the, for this uh, tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And I would once again ask you to please leave me some feedback, guys. The more feedback I get, the more videos I can make. If, I, if, if this is really helpful and beneficial and you think this is a really good thing and you'd like more videos, please, 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 can you leave me some feedback? You can subscribe the, uh, by a simple way. You can follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. You can leave comments uh, underneath the videos. Just please leave us some feedback. Obviously, I want to get your feedback so I can try and improve and maybe make more of these videos if you think they are good. Thanks, guys.